This week's news is dominated with the war with an beta launch, which Blizzard took as an opportunity to promote the epic edition of the new expansion and its guaranteed beta access with not just one, but two cinematic trailers. As it turned out, this opportunity may not have worked out the way Blizzard hoped. Stay tuned to find out why. While I try to avoid story spoilers in these news videos, I will be covering the War Within gameplay extensively today, so you have been warned. Wednesday's beta launch brought with it a large influx of players who aren't super familiar with the vagaries of the beta. As it happened, this particular build was, as happens from time to time with betas, not the most stable of builds. This is nothing new for the old hands to testing. While WoW betas are generally pretty complete, you do sometimes get the odd build that can be a bit crashy. Unfortunately, this was the time that Blizzard had chosen to use the beta as a tool to promote the epic edition. Now, of course, bugs and issues with beta tests are to be expected, but it does seem really strange to me that you'd want to make a big promotional splash like this without taking steps to make sure you were putting your best foot forwards with what you're releasing. First impressions really do matter when it comes to video games. Fortunately, most of the player base have seemed to take this in their stride, but at the same time, there are a bunch of fairly confused posts in the forums, and I'd be very surprised if this has not also generated at least some additional load on their customer services. When things aren't going to plan, the last thing your customer services really need is for marketing to start funneling even more players into the mix. Now, if you purchased the physical collector edition as a pre-order, you may be wondering how are you going to get access to beta, or even if you are going to get access to beta. The good news is that Blizzard have now confirmed that purchasers will be sent a code for access by June the 12th, so do watch out for that. Now, if you haven't jumped into the beta yet, but are planning to, and you haven't done the, any of the WoW tests before, my advice to you is to not go in expecting a fully featured game with all the things like dungeons and raids. The reality of testing World of Warcraft on the test realms is that we're usually only able to test fragments at a time and very much to Blizzard schedule. The open world is all there to play about in, but the rest of the stuff you expect it to be missing and also to need to have to keep an eye on the forums to find out about the Blizzard's testing schedule for that content if that is the stuff you want to jump into. Setting that aside though, this time around the beta comes with two types of realm. The main two realms are focused on the level up experience with level up template characters and hopefully in the future the ability to copy your characters over from live. The other realm called These Go To Eleven is intended for testing max level content and allows you to create a level 80 character and gives access to goodies like the new tier sets. This realm does not support character copy. If you want to try out your new talent builds, that's the server that you want to be creating your characters on. Whereas, if you just want to level up and experience the open world, you definitely want to be in one of the other two servers. New content wise, and this beta came with a fresh round of class ability changes and updates to the Season 1 class sets. According to Blizzard, the new class set bonuses are to follow a similar pattern to Dragonflight Season 1 by only having very limited impact on our playstyle. The goal is to enable us to focus more on our hero talent choices in this first round. Blizzard did go on to say that they do plan to introduce more impactful and powerful bonuses in later seasons. Blizzard also confirmed that for Season 1, the creation catalyst is going to work exactly the same as it did in Dragonflight Season 3. That is with one charge in Week 1 and then getting another charge every two weeks thereafter, which I certainly think is great news. Now, I'm not going to dive deep into the set bonuses in this news article, but having taken a quick look over them, I think the Blizzard have definitely achieved their goal of making them not very impactful. In fact, I'd actually say that many of the bonuses feel to me to be even a little bit weaker compared to the Dragonflight Season 1 ones. That is, though, without a tuning pass. Blizzard do usually tune these a little closer to the release, so hopefully we will still see some improvements. On the class revamp side, and hunters have been feeling a bit left out, and this week Blizzard have jumped in to reassure them that updates for all hunter specializations are going to be coming soon, in fact as soon as next week's build. 
So for all you hunters out there, there's only a little bit more to wait until you find out the fate of your favourite class. Another major change was the announcement that DPS trinkets and other effects are going to have their output reduced by about 33% for tanks and healers, with the devs explaining that they feel that these DPS effects are becoming too big a part of these roles outputs and expressing a desire for us to be making more use of dedicated tank and healing trinkets. Now, while players will always gravitate towards more DPS whenever we can, I do think that part of the issue with tank and healing trinkets is that they're often pretty lackluster, and I personally have preferred the devs to focus more on making those types of trinkets be a lot more interesting. I still remember the blood spatter scale from Shadowlands with a lot of affection, and having more options like that I think would, would actually do much more to get us to pick those items than would just slightly nerfing their DPS. Blizzard also dropped three previews for The War Within to accompany the beta, one for Delves, one for Skyriding and one for the Earth and Race. These updates don't really have any new information beyond what's already been announced so far, so rather than going through them here, I'm just going to link to them down below. Well, that is almost no new information. We did get one snippet, and that is that the Earth and Race are not going to be able to play Death Knights. The other classes that can't play, Druids, Hunters and Evokers, were already known from the BlizzCon announcement, but DK was originally announced at BlizzCon as being available for this race, so this change has come as a bit of a surprise, especially as DK doesn't really feel to me to be one of the more difficult classes for the team to implement. This coming Monday, I'll be doing a full in-depth preview for flying and sky riding in the world within. There are actually a bunch of changes to both coming in the new expansion, some of which are quite major. So do make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified when this goes live. You can also expect several more in-depth videos and major War Within features in the near future, so you definitely won't want to miss out on those. The other update from Blizzard came in the form of some answers to player questions about changes to the profession system. And this revealed a lot of new information that I think is going to be of interest to crafters and gold makers alike. Blizzard had already announced the removal of the Inspiration stat and its replacement with a system called Concentration that would allow players to push the quality of their crafts higher in a way that was a lot more deterministic than before. I'm not going to dive into the specifics of that here, but I will put a link to an article with some details on those changes in case you missed it. In this week's update, Blizzard shared that their intention is for a fully specialised crafter to be able to reliably produce items at max quality, provided they have quality 3 tools and are using quality 3 reagents. I think that this is a really good change. It was always weird to me in Dragonflight that we ended up not needing Q3 items and that crafters were not able to reliably produce max items without using things like Illustrious Insight. One consequence of this is that Blizzard planned to effectively reduce the availability of higher quality items. Maxed out crafters will now continue to produce rank 1 items instead of just rank 2 and rank 3. Blizzard didn't go into a lot of details about that but I suspect that it will mean that rank 3 items will be less plentiful and a lot more expensive. Another related change is that Blizzard planned to tune down the rate that crafters acquire concentration compared to what's currently in the test realms. This will be different per profession, with bulk professions like alchemy getting more generous amounts than say something like blacksmithing that sells fewer amounts of items overall. Another change is to Artisan's Acuity, which is the War Within's version of Artisan's Metal. While we will still get metal from acquiring profession knowledge, the weekly bonus quest isn't going to be there, meaning that it's going to be a bit less common. In return, Blizzard planned for this to mainly only be used for getting tools and recipes. We're also going to be getting a sink for it in the form of a purchasable bag of crafting reagents. As a double gatherer who doesn't have much use for the current artisan's metal, my reagent bank is crammed with the stuff and a way to spend the excess is very much going to be appreciated. On the profession knowledge front, Blizzard also shared that they are planning for a catch-up system. Acquiring knowledge will be based around the new NPC crafting orders and there's going to be a cap. But with catch-up, their goal is for only a slight variance between players over time. 
Now, catch up was, in my opinion, one of the major issues with the career crafting system in Dragonflight, where players who were late to the party seriously struggled to ever manage to catch up. And seeing this being built in, I think, will be very welcome for many. Broadly speaking, these changes all seem pretty positive, with many of them directly addressing some of the issues with the new system as it was introduced in Dragonflight. My only disappointment is that they don't plan to offer UI improvements for bringing crafters and players who want to create orders for higher quality stuff together. The current approach of using add-ons to span into trade chat isn't particularly enjoyable for either crafters or customers, and it is for me one of the main things that puts me off not only getting involved in crafting, but also buying gear with the system. I felt that the lack of a storefront UI system was a major miss in Dragonflight, and it's very disappointing to see that not being addressed. On the player discovery and data mining front, we do have a couple of interesting potential updates to share. First up was some text that suggests that Blizzard may be planning to delay the launch of Heroic Dungeons and Dungeon Fighter until the start of Season 1. Now this text is specific to Dungeon Finder, and currently in the beta it is possible to walk into a Heroic Dungeon. Obviously, as with all data mining, this isn't official and it may change or even not happen. But my guess, and I will emphasize that this is complete speculation in my part, is that we will be able to access heroic dungeons as pre-made groups, probably from the first weekly reset of the new expansion, but the ability to queue into Dungeon Finder won't be available until Season 1 starts a couple of weeks later. At the moment, Heroic doesn't have any kind of lockout on the beta, but I'm going to hazard a guess that there may be a weekly lockout on Heroic in the War Within, possibly just for the pre-season, but potentially even beyond. It's also worth saying that it currently looks like Mythic Zero is not going to be accessible until the season launches. Again, this is not officially confirmed. This is almost certainly due to the changes to Dungeon Difficulty that were launched in the current Season 4. My guess is that any item level requirement for the Heroic Dungeon queues will be so high as to be unattainable pre-season, and that would only have caused confusion to players. Blizzard have always been a bit conservative with these requirements, preferring people who are pushing their limits to use pre-mates. Overall, assuming I'm right, this is probably a reasonable change. I for one will be aiming to do a heroic world tour for the pre-season weeks if it's available, and not having to struggle with overly high item level requirements in the dungeon queues and being pushed towards finding pre-made groups probably makes a lot of sense and will actually make it a bit of a smoother achievement for those of us who aim to do that kind of stuff. The other change to dungeons that has been data mined is that the new equivalent to aspect crests are only going to drop from mythic plus 9 and higher. Currently in Dragonflight, it's from a plus 6 and above. Now as someone who does keys at that level most seasons, this isn't going to impact me a lot. The main issue I do have with it is that the current system does offer an option for folks who only get hero track gear to be able to fully upgrade it without stretching all the way to where they'd be farming mythic track gear. Getting gear that you can only upgrade halfway kinda just feels weird, and this is probably going to put more players into facing that situation. I also think that making more changes to a new system that hasn't even had a full season play out yet is a bit premature. Blizzard have a long history of moving the Mythic Plus goalposts upwards, only to then to have to nerf their way back to keeping the right levels of player accessibility engagement that they want. The end result of that? Well, I wonder how long it's going to be before we're all going to be back doing our weekly plus 20s to get the best gear. But what about all of you guys? Have you been able to get into the beta yet? If so, what's your favourite content? Do let me know in the comments down below. Now, as I mentioned at the start, we got two brand new cinematic trailers this week. As trailers, neither of the new cinematics offer much in the way of new storyline revelations. The first and longer trainer was nevertheless very enjoyable, offering a little pastiche of the various major characters for the new expansion, Illyria, Jaina, Magni, Anjun, Thrall, and of course, Zalatath, all accompanied with a voiceover of Zalatath herself. For me, this trailer was actually awesome, with great visuals, music, and Zalatath's smirk at the end is to die for. This is one of the few the trailers that I've actually wanted to go back, turn up the volume, and play again. 
Now, the second trailer was much shorter and is much more of a feature preview, and that really wasn't super exciting for me. But honestly, I'm probably not the intended audience for that, so I will give it a pass. We also got a continuation of the series of three short stories. This time, it was with the Goblin Way. This story's main character is none other than Monty Gaslow, who's on a mini crusade to improve safety and working standards for the Goblin. And this time around, he's trying to encourage Marin Noggin Forger to reform his mining processes. I suspect that a lot of folks will be a bit surprised at the idea of a Goblin leader wanting a better lot for the workers, but Horde players who did BFA's Mechagon Unlock will probably remember that Gaslow does have a bit of form for caring a little bit more about his people than some of his peers. The story itself also manages to provide a bit of a cutting critique of corporate greed at the same time as offering a path for goblins to have a little bit more of a positive vibe in the in-game lore and I have to say I did find it pretty enjoyable and I do recommend you go and give it a read. I'll put a link down below to the short story and also the upcoming book that's going to include these short stories along with two additional exclusives. This week also marked the first concrete signs of World of Warcraft's 20th anniversary which will be in November this year. As part of the celebrations, Blizzard have announced an orchestral symphony concert of World of Warcraft music, which will take place in Lausanne, in Switzerland on the 27th and 28th of September. Orchestral concerts of video game music have become very popular, so if you haven't made any holiday plans for this year and fancy a trip to Switzerland, this could be right up your street. Again, there will be a link down below with more details on how to book if you want to. Now, I usually do try to cover all of the various game versions in these news updates, but this week really has been almost entirely dominated by the war within. But we did get one short update from WoW Classic producer Agren telling us to expect more updates for Season of Discovery Phase 4 next week, and also that the PTR for Seas 4 will be launching in the near future. So don't worry, more normal service will be returning really soon. If you found this week's news episode even vaguely interesting, do make sure to let both me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon down below. I do these news updates every Saturday and I also release in-depth previews, reviews, guides and rants on a regular basis, so stay tuned for more. That's all for now, thanks for watching.